Good morning again. Journalists have a harder and harder time because they're oppressed by governments that don't want to listen to the, to the stuff they have to say. On the other hand, hate and fear of the other grows everywhere. We see it in Turkey, in the USA, in England, probably also in the Netherlands, but I don't read the news. Uh, what can we do to stop this? Andrazine and Lenret came all the way over from California to present their silent protest, which is an offline network to share art and have fun partying. So please give a warm welcome to Andrazine and Lenret. Thank you, Shah. Thank you for waking up early. Yeah, you want to help out? Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> so uh, the upside is that it's party time. So we're going to present you a tool which uh, yeah, is going to allow us to party. I don't get to see the slides. Here we go. All right. Party like a hacker. Show me. OK, so the real motivation behind the talk today is like, to help a bit the larger world to uh, share art using technology. And uh, we're going to show you on the way, like, how we apply it to your own lives. All the pictures are taken from, like, parties we organize using these tools. And uh, it's an invitation to, like, you know, help you to contribute to this open source tool and extend it to your needs. Show me baby. OK, so we're going to start with a demo. There's a network currently. Um, running from this box up there, which is an open network called Silent. If you join it and open a web browser and then go to anything, you'll get to stream the music that I'm going to play right now. <laughs> so there's a controller right here connected to uh, this Mac. It's somehow streaming to this box. And you can, using the headphones, join the network. And you know we'll have a silent disco over IP, essentially. So to summarize that, go ahead, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can do that. Absolutely. So we're going to show you a quick video uh, to show you how to join the network. Welcome to Silent Party, baby. The silent protest.io. OK. So there should be um, a network called Silent Red, which is open. And if you open any URL from there, um, DNS will automatically redirect you to party.silentprotest.io, where there's two streams. If you play the first video, you're going to be streaming what we're playing right now on stage. Yep. So when you're way too slow. Okay. <laughs> when you connect, just you'll see this little all right, um, player here. Just click play, and it will play the stream that Enderzine is DJing with you to you live right now. Party time. Okay. The agenda. We're going to introduce you to the team that helped us uh, build this. We're going to speak a bit about our motivation, how we envisioned the project, how we ended up delivering it, and how we'd like to take it from there, and what we, we need your help for that. So the team. So quickly, we had like three main engineers, uh, Ian, who helped us lot with uh, hardware hacking, the network stack. Yeah, decent, uh, decent, very decent party animal, shall I say. Thanks for your help with all this project, my brother. Uh, I've been helping mostly with prototyping, like the early prototypes, uh, and we had another uh, engineer. Who was, okay, we all, all three of us work for Salesforce in San Francisco. Richard could not make it. Uh, he helped us tremendously, notably in the DJ side. We'd like to thank very quickly, like uh, our friends who helped us build that stuff. In particular, Sean, who solved like yeah some non-trivial prototyping from car batteries, which was very cool. Uh, ODJ friends who helped us uh, gather a crowd big enough to prototype uh, our IDs. Um, Justin for the logistics, and yeah, all the friends who uh, helped us beta test our IDs. Okay, the motivation behind this talk. So if you look at like, you know, uh, NGO reports uh, from like Reporters Without Borders, Amnesty International, over the past few years, they noticed a trend in 
diminution of freedom of expression worldwide, which, you know, there are things we can do little about, like uh, journalists being threatened, opposition newspapers being shut down. Um, an example which really strikes me is uh, playing music in Iran in public is forbidden, and it's actually enforced. And we thought, like, well, maybe that one we can do something about. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the motivation behind the talk. All right. So let's, let's start with, like, a bit of, like, how we envisioned a project and where that took us. So we thought it'd be cool to have some sort of network. We were observing people partying, in particular in San Francisco, where this device called the Silent Disco is popular. It's basically RF, so you have a DJ who's uh, streaming over radio frequencies to people who need a special receiver. You could do that over uh, standard FM, for instance. Typically, that's not what they do. There's like, um, the FTC has liberalized like one band on the 2.4 gigahertz, which is also shared with Wi-Fi, and they use that with like custom receivers. We thought this is not exactly what we want, because we'd like people we don't know to be able to join our parties, and we don't want to give them headset that we'll never get back. So we thought, hey, um, how about we try to, you know, um, do something more tailored to, to your needs, and where participants can also contribute. So for that, RF sucks. Like, you receive RF, but typically you don't transmit back to the server. So we thought, right, let's do a network which is portable, so we can do outdoor parties, use it for protesting and things like this. I'd like it to be stealth as a silent disco. Uh, we want some level of redundancy, so that imagine we all at a protest somewhere, we five people carrying part of the network, somebody gets arrested, we want the network to survive. So, yeah, we want to achieve that through redundancy, and we want it to be extensible in the sense we want participants to the protest or the party or the event to be able to uh, share their own art or what they're seeing um, so that, and bring their own IP services, essentially. Which leads us to <laughs> this beautiful graphic. <laughs> we basically want uh, an IP network. We want it to be free and open source. Uh, to be scalable to hundreds of participants, maybe thousands, because that's the order of magnitude of parties as we like them. Um, we want to be able to have custom IP services on top of this, and uh, yeah, we want minimal configuration, because not everybody is actually a hacker. <laughs> so let's see how we uh, actually implemented this. To translate this into requirements first, um, we'd like an offline Wi-Fi network, um, the reason for not using uh, the GSM stack is basically fear of MC catchers. So we thought, <laughs> maybe people can use their phone, but not the GSM. Let's see how that's going to work. <laughs> we want, you know, basic network encryption and things like this, adaptable power, so that we can carry our device uh, for several hours if we need be outdoors, or we can plug it for like days or months uh, if it's an indoor party. We'd like to be able to stream music at a reasonable speed. We want to use web browsers as clients, because that allows no configuration. And everybody has, you know, typically access to a web browser if they can join the network. And we'd like complex services like video conferencing. And it's party time. You're on the network already? You're all streaming music? Yeah? Here's someone streaming. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm not super multitasking in the morning. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about the implementation now. Um, so the photo tip here is of the, what we have on the stage. This is the main idea. We have our DJ here. Um, streams via IceCast to the silent protest setup, which then streams to all of you nice people here. The logo is cool or what? <laughs> <laughs> so going into actual hardware. For the access point, we're using a Unify APAC Pro, um, primarily because it is sports gigabit Wi-Fi, hundreds of clients. Um, for the computer that does all the transcoding and streaming all the servers run, we're using Raspberry Pi 3, because it's portable, it doesn't use too much power. And for the battery, using a nice lithium-ion battery, shipped straight from China, hasn't exploded yet, so far so good. And this is what the entire setup looks like um, outside the box, basically. The battery, this 12-volt battery, goes to a transformer that steps up to 48 volts for the AP, and then plugs right on into the Pi. 
And of course, this is our software stack. Um, Linux on the, uh, on the Pi and on o using OpenWT for the access point. Nginx does web server, video conferencing by Hublin. Liquid Soap does transcoding from the AUG stream from Tractor to MP3 so you can all play it. Um, that was a requirement because iOS devices do not play AUG streams. They, ha they only accept MP3 and a few other small formats. And of course, Icecast 2 and Docker to help us automate the whole thing. So of course, just going back to what I was saying earlier, that this is what we ended up doing. We wanted a gigabit IP network um, over Wi-Fi. Uh, to 2.4 and 5 gigahertz access point costs about $120 for the Unify or APRI Pro. Um, the network is entirely offline, no internet access, which is both an ad advantage because you do not want to be tracked when you're on this network. Um, each AP can have up to 200 clients. We stream at 120 kilobits. And of course, we want to eventually add mesh networking for scalability and redundancy. So Jonathan here had the initial project idea back in March. And of course, later, just a few weeks later, we had a prototype streaming to 100 clients in our office. Worked pretty well. Then we made it battery powered a month or two later when we had the giant car battery provided by our coworker. Then, of course, then earlier this summer, I worked on getting everything running with Docker so we can distribute the builds. And now with the summer, we're launching the product, or the service, not product. But we're not done yet. This is the actual features that have resulting. We have the wireless network. We have live streaming of the audio, which hopefully you're all able to listen to right now. Video conferencing. If you um, below the stream, you click on the Hub Hublin link. That should open up a WebRTC video stream. You, you can all do a video chat with each other at the same time. You can extend it to have file sharing over the IP network, so you can share media or other files. And there, of course, everything is open source, and we can view it on our GitHub page. I'll let Jonathan here talk about some of our previous prototypes. Those are my favorite. This is my favorite slide. You can see the huge uh, car battery powering our first device out there. The huge transformator also. This is all recycled for Burning Man. Uh, that's our first uh, decent prototype. Let's call it that way. We call it San Francisco Camouflage because it's covered in glitter. And this is a ghetto one we actually used like at our last party because it was very small. It's made of cardboard. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. an Amazon box, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> as basic as it gets. All right, now for some demo videos. <clears throat> Let's do this. All right, so um, that's the final prototype. So it looks like a proper box. I actually carried this on the plane a few times now. So yeah, it looks like a bomb. I got TSA last week uh, on the way back from Vegas. It's absolutely fine. OK, so from the point of view of a DJ, basically they're using this kind of software. This one is called Tractor. There's equivalent uh, open source. Um, the best one is called Mix. And those things can stream to um, a server typically online. So that's not what we do. We have an offline network. But the functionality to stream to Icecast is already built in. Um, it's streaming in OG, which interestingly is not supported by any iPhones. <laughs> I mean, if you have Chrome on an iPhone, it, it cannot read OGG. <laughs> so uh, either you, we could use like other application, like force people to use VLC and stuff like that. But we thought, no, that's really not what we want. We want the thing to work for everybody with a browser with no configuration. So we actually ended up transcoding this stream to MP3, because MP3 is um, you know, understood by um, any phone, as far as we can tell. So that works pretty well. Um, OK, that's how we set up our parties. <laughs> you can see the device out there. The DJs are there. This is in a cave, uh, somewhere in a public location. We strongly support uh, you know, peaceful parties in public location. Consult the law of the place where you do this before you do it. Uh, in San Francisco, the big deal is between federal land, where it's a no-go, and um, city land, where it's OK to party. So that was the day before the party in a huge cave. We set up those, those, uh, this environment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have the DJ sit on the floor. <laughs> That's how we receive them. 
Can you show me the next one? Yeah, that's the, okay, the same setup again. Can you show me the party the next day? So that's basically the same spot with the same people the next day. It looks a bit better. And um, we used like, you know, both our silent disco setup, and, uh, which amazingly like, covered the entire cave. And uh, <laughs> to be honest, like proper speakers at times. Um, so we know we can accommodate 100 people easy uh, on our setup in all those conditions. <laughs> Thanks for the people who helped us uh, beta test your IDs. OK. You can skip that. You can skip that. <laughs> uh, that one is cool. That's one we did at, uh, yeah, at an unknown location. It's outdoors again. And you're going to see in the next video that uh, after a few hours, so we did that for the full moon because we thought it was cool. And after a few hours, the police showed up and they were like, you're too noisy. We don't mind you being here, but you're too noisy. So we, uh, we shut them up. But we've got a silent, we got a silent disco set up. So we're going to shut down the speakers and switch to silent disco. And amazingly, they, they let us party like, you know, for a few more hours. So yeah, that's one of our colleagues at Salesforce was a DJ. That the police, right here. <laughs> And they were like, yeah, we don't mind what you're doing, but uh, you should do it silently. Cool. OK, that's the first time the thing actually worked. So yeah, my apartment looks like a hacker space. Uh, we have Tractor right here, which was uh, streaming for the first time. So we could stream from uh, a laptop. We could stream from an Android phone. We could stream from an iPhone. And yeah, that was all working properly. So that was very cool. OK, you can skip that. But the first time the iPhone worked. But I think everybody now uh, has understood the, the point. Yeah, that's also at a public location in a park. <clears throat> so I think we get to see the DJs in that one. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have them sit on the floor, right? She's actually a professional DJ, <laughs> Jill. She was nice enough to, uh, uh, yeah, to come over to test our environment. So we had to sit on the floor, because like, yeah. <laughs> she has a very small controller next to her. There's a pack of, um, you know, generator. And that's basically what you need to, like, throw a party. If you connect it right now, you might see that there's a video chat. And amazingly, this takes no resources on our side. Like, the, the video chat is like entirely client side, meaning that this case really well. We pretty, we're particularly happy about that one. I mean, and this is useful in real life condition. I mean, I, I don't know where you live, but there were serious protests in Auckland, which is like, you know, across the bridge from where we live after the Trump elections. And um, um, filming police and being able to see what each other see at a protest and being able to carry your shit without being caught by easy catchers, I'm some political value. Okay, I think we're good with the demos. All right, this is a quick video. Before we had iOS support, we had the people on iOS install VLC so they could actually stream the AUG stream. Dope. All right. Watch the videos. Oh, yeah. Back when we did the car battery setup with a giant transformer. Not as portable. So at this stage, my landlord was convinced I was building a bomb. Yeah, this one is particularly rough. The art of prototyping, baby. Lots of time spent prototyping. This is just going through demoing all of the configuration setups. So the code is on GitHub. If you want to uh, uh, play with it, commit. We have an interesting architecture now, which is Docker-based. So hopefully, it should be easier for you to add your own services.
Silent protest, baby. Okay. So we're going to talk a bit about... <laughs> okay, that was the layout of the demos. Uh, we're going to uh, talk a bit about like where we'd like to take the project further. Yeah, where we want to go from here. I'd like to add decentralization, because if you're in a protest or an event and someone um, gets taken away by the cops or is no longer able to be with the rest of the group, we want the network to still work, so distributing both the access points and all of the CPU intensive parts, the streaming, video chat, anything else. Same thing with redundancy, in case something goes down or doesn't work. And mesh, and of course we want, we're evaluating using IPv6 to help us remove the need on some of the decentralized IPv4 necessities such as a DHCP server or DNS, which IPv6 can help redistribute. And of course, to make the project more portable and ideally wearable. Right now we have it in this nice little small briefcase, it's very portable, but be, being able to be like on your person and not obvious would be much helpful so people can identify you as one of the crucial parts of this network. And of course, we want people to help us get involved. Um, find out more information on our website, silentprotest.io, or github.com forward slash silentprotest. Everything is open source, and we welcome any sort of contributions or additions. Last slide. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We would like very much you to contribute to uh, all small open source projects. And we hope you enjoyed the party. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's, uh, there's plenty of time for, uh, for questions and, uh, and uh, suggestions and answers. I have one myself. You must have so much fun traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a bit of a nightmare to, to be here. My, uh, my first flight got canceled. Yeah. But we're so happy to be here and like, yeah, it makes the experience even more worthwhile. Anyone? Please go to the microphone, yes. <laughs> Can you talk into the microphone, please? Can you tell us more about the, like, your choice of router and what, like, what modifications you had to make to that, or if any? Because uh, I, I saw you used like, OpenWRT and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so you're right. Uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting, I mean, basically when we bought the hardware, we bought it for the hardware, because it was a dual band, it was a cheap dual band uh, Wi-Fi router. And we know we wanted like, you know, a gigabit network, given the number of people we want to accommodate. Um, I tried to use the vendor software first, and at some stage he told me, hey, if you want a DHCP server on your access point, you need to buy a physical dongle. And at this stage, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, uh, from there, OpenWRT was like an obvious choice to me uh, because of the number of platforms supported. And um, we had to tune you right, certain things to make it work on every phone. In particular, if you're using iPhone, iPhone has been a nightmare from A to Z. Like I told you about the OGG stack, which is not supported natively inside the web browser, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. At first, they were not connecting at all. And we were like, what the hell? And we had like, you know, the, the two bands, like the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, like working correctly with our Android. And it turned out that if the, the band is too thin for the iPhone, then it won't connect. So we had to switch it from like bands of like 20 megahertz to 40. And that allows us to like, yeah, solve the connectivity problem. <laughs> Good question. I additionally, I want to add that the choice for also to use OpenWRT, um, open support for, if other people want to replicate this setup, they can use the OpenWRT config and don't need to use this exact same hardware as us. Some very cool stuff with OpenWRT, though, is that um, they can now support uh, meshing over Wi-Fi. And, I mean, that's something which allows you to uh, build redundancy like you couldn't before in terms of speed of the network and, like, scale you can cover. Like, um, this little, you know, case can accommodate like 200 people and it can mesh with other uh, such suitcases. I have another one there. And uh, yeah, this is fucking dope, let's be for real. So there's a bit of tuning to do with like the kernel modules and stuff like that. That's not the default config. 
But uh, yeah, you can support uh, two things, 802.11r, which is the meshing, and K, which is the fast switching of one access point to the other. Yeah, very cool. No question. Any other questions? Anyone? I have one more question. Where's the protest? Where's the protest? <laughs> the idea that, you know, um, we, we support the idea of uh, non-violent uh, forms of expression. And what you do with the platform is up to you. We hope uh, you create art with this and tailor it to your need. But that's not our objective. Our objective is just to, you know, provide the framework to do that, especially to people who know nothing about technology. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Can Thank I have a, applause, please, for Androzine and Danrad? Thank you very much. Thank you.